This is a rolling release distribution for beginners that sports the fabulous KDE desktop, the customizer's dream come true. And of course, I'm talking about PC Linux OS, and we're going to look at that today on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Before I begin, we are looking at the PC Linux OS website. Now I went ahead and I downloaded the PC Linux OS KDE distribution and this is the full deal. Uh, now for those of you who want to try PC Linux OS but you want to put your own packages on it and they recommend on the website that you're an intermediate user for this, you may want to download the KDE Mini Me version. Okay, here we are. This is the KDE desktop that you get, and I actually installed this in my virtual machine because this did not give me an out-of-the-box experience. What? No out-of-the-box experience in VirtualBox? Ah! The first thing you will notice on the upper right corner of the screen, you get some options here for adding activities, shortcut settings, folder view settings. You can lock the screen or you can leave. To unlock the widgets, just press this button here and then you can add a panel and you can add widgets. And that is simply done by pressing add widgets and then you can add a clock, for instance, to your desktop if you wish. Okay, and then you just go into the settings on that by clicking the little wrench. And you can change its appearance. Oh, this is the binary clock. Maybe I just wanted to have a regular clock. So we can just press X to get rid of it. Using the scroll bar down here, we can go through and we can find something else. How about a fuzzy clock? Let's see what this one does. Huh, that's cool. Five past 11. To... But hey, all right, this works. We can close this out. On the lower right corner of the screen, you will notice you can reopen that again and then add widgets and add spacers and customize your taskbar down here if you wish to do so. You also have the clock with the date. You have a device notifier, organizer, reminder daemon, and notifications here, a volume control, a clip monitor, and of course the network which took me a little while to figure out VirtualBox. You have two desktops to choose from, a quick launch to your file manager, and then you have a link to the Synaptic Package Manager. Let's go ahead and open this up because this is an important point that I need to share with you. Because PC Linux OS is a rolling release distribution, you will need to run this as they recommend at least twice a month. And after it loads all of the packages and everything from its repositories, you will have an option to mark all upgrades by clicking this button here, and then click Apply, and it will download all of those updates to the system. So we just press Mark All Upgrades as indicated, and no Apply. Hmm. Oh, that's because I didn't hit the Reload button. Now when we press Mark All Upgrades, it will tell us we need to mark some other things. And then the Apply button becomes available to us. I'm not going to do that right now. I just want to show you that this is uh, what you will need to do, and you'll need to do this regularly to update your system. You have a Configure Your Computer button here. Something I'd like to point out. is that KDE has a lot 
of options and I do mean a lot of them. So if you're just coming in fresh from Windows and you don't have a whole lot of computer experience, you may want to try a lighter desktop option. However, if you're coming from Windows and you've been using Windows for years, this should be a breeze for you. But you have sharing options you can set up. You can set up your network services, all of your hardware, your internet, system settings, network sharing, your local disks, security on your system. This is where you'll set up your firewall. And then you can also configure your boot options. And this is where it gets to be fun. You can configure your desktop and change its appearance. And you can pretty much, you know, do all kinds of fun things with this. You can set your account details, application appearance. Let's go ahead and try something fun. Let's select application appearance. And from here, you have a number of styles that you can choose from. CDE, for instance, will give a archaic look to the system. You have clean looks. You can have a GTK Windows style, which is similar to what you would see in the classic GNOME 2. I actually like how that looks. So we can apply. Also, you can go in and configure colors if you want to. And there are a number of color settings to choose from. Ooh, that doesn't look very cool, does it? <laughs> Let's try this one. I don't really think I care for that one either. Why don't we go back to default? What's also cool about this is you can get new schemes. Why search the internet? This distribution will get it for you. And as you can see, there are a number of them here. Ooh, this dark gray one looks nice. Let's go ahead and click Install on that. Then we can select Close. And now dark gray is in our menu. Let's apply that one. Okay. Kind of cool, I suppose. Icons. You can choose, uh, there's two of them installed by default. You can choose GNOME or Oxygen. Or, how about get new themes? And here we go again. Why surf the internet when it gets it for you right here? Let's try Ice Glass. By clicking on this, I believe it will open up the web browser and give us some details on it. That looks like a pretty cool icon set. So we'll go ahead and close this, and let's install it. Oh, and it gives us some choices here. Well, why not get the latest one? It's got a lot of stars on it, too, so apparently everybody loves this one. Something of note, though, these icon sets are fairly large in file size. So I hope you have a fast internet connection if you're on dial-up. Uh, you better pack a lunch. <laughs> now that it is installed, we can close this. And now we have our icon set. We can apply it. Then when we open up Dolphin, oh, still updating the system configuration so we're not seeing the icons just yet. Okay, it looks like it changed some of them, but not all. So, something to be aware of. I think I'm going to go with the default GNOME theme and apply that. But you can see it's changed some of the icons here. Alright, that looks kind of cool, too. Something neat about Dolphin is you can really do some cool customization and you can make the dolphin file manager look however you want to you can have it hide the panels on the sides uh, pretty much uh, 
there are so many different tweaks that you can do with this, and I don't have time to go into all of that right now. So pretty much, yeah, everything you'll want to mess around with to configure your desktop is located in here. And there are tons and tons and tons of options. And the only thing I can say is experimentation is key. Try each one of these settings out. Push the knobs, pull the levers, and uh, try and break it. Of course, you also have a quick launch here. Oh, this is just to show uh, your desktop here. Okay, and then it has a standard uh, menu, which is very easy for navigating. There are tons of applications that are included with this, and there is no way that I'm going to be able to cover all of them. But you have uh, all of your configuration tools here, which is showing in the configuration window on the desktop. Um, you have uh, the LibreOffice installed with this and, of course, database development. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, educational tools. Marble is an excellent tool, um, which is uh, which resembles Google Earth. Not quite as advanced, though. Uh, you also uh, can install the VirtualBox um, emulator. Finances. You have monitoring tools. You have uh, printing uh, especially if I have an HP printer, this will help you get it set up. And then this is your access to your terminals. A number of archiving tools that are available to you. There's some documentation here, which is very important if you want to get the most out of the system with the inclusion of the PC Linux OS documentation portal. I recommend that you check this out if you are new. Okay, and then of course you have the very lightweight KWrite text editor. You have a number of file tools to get the most out of the system, and it's good that they included BleachBit because I use this quite a quite a bit to clean the system out. As indicated, you have the Dolphin File Manager. You can easily find files and folders. And I mean, you have several different things rolled in here. Um, you get uh, a batch renaming tool. You get the File Manager Conqueror, um, K Rename, Midnight Commander, yet another file management utility. So, I mean, there's two or three things for everything you'd want to do here. Um, a bunch of games come included with this. A ton of graphics tools. A ton of internet tools, just about everything under the sun that you can think of. You have the full LibreOffice suite, and I mean, this is this is the full Monty that you're getting here. Okay, you also have in your software center uh, the Dupe Clean GUI, the LibreOffice manager, and of course the Synaptic package manager that you will use for updating your system. You have a number of sound tools. And you have a number of video tools included with this. Quite a comprehensive setup here. But personally, if I were to use this, I would go with the mini version and then just install all of the applications that I want. Bottom line, I like what PC Linux brings to the table for the beginner who wants to try a rolling release, plus the KDE experience, which allows you to customize your desktop in ways that you could never do in Windows. I recommend that you check out the PC Linux OS website yourself and download a copy and give it a try.